hey, what's up? <laughs> it's your girl, Andrea. Um, this is a different look than you've probably, I mean, I guess I was wearing bibs in one of the videos, so never mind. But, anyways, those are rolling really weird. It feels like winter outside. It's not as bad now, but I've been sick, so we are not messing around with cold weather and getting cold because it <clears throat> kicks my butt. So anyways, that's where we're at. Well, that's going to be annoying. <laughs> the fan and the fan. Anyways. We have a load of fats going out next week, so that's to be exciting. Get some more of the chunkies out of here. Oh my gosh, hello F8. Hi loves. Cause there's some boys and girls ready to go. You guys still have feet left, what are you doing? Anyways, the wind tried to destroy the silage pile the other day. That was fun. Super fun when you get like 60 mile an hour winds. Dad's loading. Feeding cows first, which normally they're not first, um, but we have need to grind hay, so you can't tell. It's getting a little bit empty in there. There's still a couple days worth, but we'll have to grind hay, so he's making sure he gets cows fed before he shows up because they will have a fit. <laughs> get wound up. Take, take out the knee again. That'd be good. What? <laughs> Are you going to go run around to cows like you always do? Keep them in the bunks. That's what you do. You think you're so helpful. Cows are still on like a half batch feed. They're not on full batch yet and they are doing just fine. So um, we'll probably just keep them at that until either one gets really cold or they start talking to us and crying during the afternoon. Um, Cause they're still eat, I mean, it's probably two thirds of what a normal batch is. Um, between half and two thirds. So they're still getting plenty of food. They're eating it, they're cleaning it up. Besides a little bit of corn stalks. Hello. How are you? <laughs> so, they're not on bunch food yet, but they still get feed and they wait. You can see they're all just chilling, but they're obviously not like starving. They're not over here terrorizing everything, so they're doing well on it. But they got enough that they can go like eat corn stalks, stuff that's out there, find that, um, grass along the fence lines, weeds along the fence line, and they're still getting feed. So like they literally eat and they go lay down. <laughs> they're like, okay, I'm good. So um, once we get cold, obviously when their pen gets smaller, they won't have enough room to go do that. And they want them to feed so that we will feed them more, but it's working out and they're getting exercise. Because Miss Ma'am's here, <laughs> coming first calf heifers have lost some weight, which is good because they were F-A-T, <laughs> too chubby. Hi, gross. Can you tell I bought up a bunch of coming second calf heifers right here, they're tame. <laughs> Anybody of the 23 calved this last spring for the first time, so. Since we uh, tripled the herd, people have like drove by and been like, why is there so many cows out there? Because we didn't have them all out last fall and they were in the barn. So everyone's been like, what's going on? <laughs> kind of a cranky granddaughter of my old lady, Moonlight, Miss Ma'am. You must be getting over it a little bit. We'll find out when you calf. Mom is guarding the fortress, aka at the gate, because every once in a while they think they're going to sneak out and either go in the barn or go somewhere else. And then I need to make sure they get out of the way because they are not the brightest about getting out of the way of the feeder wagon. So that's why I'm out here. Get out of the way! 
a different pitch because they're not moving. Check the bunk, pick up the trash. Hi, Tuts. Check the bunk. You're okay, honey. Pick up the trash. in it, but hey, you must be the dancing cow. Hey, Red. And now's a good time that if we were closer to camping, I would look at udders, but there's not anything to look at right now besides udders that are drying up still or non-existent udders, so the more you know. Now Dad's going to go drop in the barn and then the bulls. Hey, Chutz. Hey, girls. So those are the open crazies and cool cows and also cows that need to gain weight. So it's kind of a hodgepodge. Hello, you're my favorite. In here, but they get plenty of feed. We got questions on cool cows and kind of like what happened to some of the cows in our preg checking video. So like the one that had an abscess, she's still here. She should come out of it. We're keeping an eye on her. She's actually right here. Um, she's doing just fine. And then the one that was breathing funny like really harshly we called her that week um actually like the next day because as quickly as her issues came on um our vet was really worried that she was actually gonna unfortunately pass away pretty quickly so cold cows are worth a lot cows are worth a lot nobody wants to just throw away 1500 1600 dollars still has a purpose like she can still produce some beef for humans and pets and byproducts a bunch of them so Instead of her being wasted, having to call the rendering truck for her or bury her here, we sold her. She was really fat. <laughs> she was chunky. She did just fine um, price-wise for us. So get rid of her there. And then cull cows, every operation is going to be different, but we cull anything that one is open for the most part. Like if they're not pregnant, they financially are not a smart move for us. Like a cow has to have a calf for a year to pay for herself and to produce that profit. So especially as prices do this for us all the time. Um, so obviously it opens and then if they are crazy beyond like being a protective mom for a, like a day or two or three, if they are man eaters, like want to literally kill us like 30, um, they're going to get cold unless, you know, in the barn we can handle a little bit better. But if we have crazies, if they, you know, put their, ca their calf's life in danger, that's happened before when they're protecting and being insane, they step on their calf. That's a big problem. Sometimes people call for old age, they call for attitude problems. If like they don't have a good bag, they're not producing milk, that's another reason that someone would pull cows. Just depends. So a little bit of a tidbit on that, but in our eyes, like cattle still serve a purpose. If she's not going to a mama cow, if she's not gonna have a baby, she still can go feed the world and supply with byproducts that you use every single day. So Go. Just wait though. One, two, there's another one. Yay. <laughs> Gotta raise this baby up. Oh, 
is a switch. Pops up. Need some airflow. And also it's nice outside, so. I was gonna show you more of the top grinding action than our seed guy showed up, so we were chatting it up instead. So I will go tell you, I will go show you um, what it looks like and talk about all of that jazz right now. This is the mountain of ground hay and ground corn stalk. So we actually do a mix. So you can see here, um, this is pretty heavy in hay, but there's also the corn stalks in here. So it gets mixed through um, depending on the time and like the ratio of it it sometimes it's every other sometimes it's like one grass hay two corn stalks grass hay one corn stalk grass hay two that type of deal um we feed quite a bit of corn stalks just because cows need that dry matter and that forage and that filler but they don't need a rich diet because you don't need them getting away it's more of like a maintain type of situation um so that's how that goes but we grind it because then it mixes into a tmr so we could grind hay and grind corn stalks in our actual like feeder wagon if we wanted but this is much faster and also we can get accurate amounts and not have to have specific size of rations versus like one entire bale versus you know taking like two-thirds of a bale like this so about every three weeks the top grinder comes they grind it up um i want to say it's like 40-ish bales every time somewhere around then and Get the file we're good to go especially on days it's not windy it's nice but when it's windy obviously it's not fun so but everything gets fed ground hay and ground corn stalks that's how we get the forages in them essentially along with the corn silage modified uh corn distillers we feed some soy syrup to the feedlot animals not the cows anymore they do grind a little bit of alfalfa every once in a while cracks corn to the feedlot and then silage of course and we all do some earlage so that's the, the tub grinding fun this yard is empty. This yard is empty. We gotta clean them out yet. Um, obviously there's cows out in the cornfield, so that would, you know, normally fill a little bit. The barn is probably half to two thirds full. It's not full, full. Bulls are here, so clearly plenty of room. And then our fats are slowly disappearing. This is the time of year that we tend to buy some additional calves for the feedlot, so <laughs> depending on the ordeal there. We might have some coming, we might not. Stay tuned for that. That's usually a midnight to 4 a.m. unloading type of deal. So that's what's up. Um, the fans are on in the bins. That's what you're hearing in the background. That corn is just a touch wet, so we're just keeping some airflow through it. It's not actually wet. It's fine for storage, um, but it just makes you a little worrisome. So, but anyways, that's a tidbit of morning chores with the chaos and my still kind of sick, lovely voice that you get to hear. But if you have any questions, make sure to let me know. Find me on other social platforms as that fit advocate. But until next time, we'll see you then.